Let's be honest, we have not seen such a divisive stock market since probably the great financial crisis. And to be honest, this is creating more problems than solutions. We're seeing so much misinformation and fear getting spread on social media that it might be leading more investors towards the path of losses than profits for the future. And so instead of just giving my opinion in this video, I want to give you guys the facts about when and how the stock market will actually bottom whenever it happens and what the historic bear markets over the past 100 years have shown us about buying during times of peak fear. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, I want to look at some facts and charts to understand exactly where we've come over the past two weeks as the S&P 500 has indeed set a new low for the 2022 bear market. As you can see here right off the bat, we are seeing a record number of put buying in this market. We have never seen this happen over the past 20 years, not only throughout the Great Recession, but also the tech bubble, which is also a time when we saw retail investing actually go up. And so it's very interesting to see that right now we have broken all these highs. Now, this could be because of Robinhood investing and the advent of social media, but it also could be a bigger picture sign that the stock market today is not going to behave the same as it did in 2008 or in 2001. The simple reality is that the market today is driven much more by algorithms and pure retail investor sentiment than it has ever been in the past, which means overall as an investor for the long term, you're going to have to go through many more ups and downs, and that's going to test your patience and your conviction. But if you guys just want to look at the straight facts, this is how previous bear markets over the past 100 years since World War II have performed. To put this into perspective right now, as of the filming of this video, the S&P 500 in 2022 is down around 25%. So think about it this way. If you want to look at this market from the worst case scenario, then clearly we probably have a lot more downside to go. But if you're looking at this from an average standpoint of view, we might not have as much downside as many people think as the average is only around 32.7%. And unlike what many folks believe, the inflation rate on average during these bottoms was only around 4.8%. And so no, we don't need to get down to 2% for the market to bottom. Instead, we need to wait on the trend to shift instead of just waiting for this actual number to go down. But unfortunately, as we know, the stock market is a lot more complicated than that. And one of the big indicators people have been using to mark the bottom is something called the VIX volatility index. Basically, this index tracks the volatility of options on the S&P 500 ETF, which is also called the SPY. And basically, if this index goes up, it means there's more fear and pessimism in the media and in the stock market. Whereas if it goes down, it means that the market's much more comfortable and chances are the market's actually going to go higher. Now, the interesting thing is that unlike what many people would initially expect, there is no inverse correlation between the performance of the stock market and the VIX. As you can see over the past two to three years, this is how this thing has performed. During the pandemic, when fear skyrocketed, we went from around 15 all the way to a peak of 82, which obviously was followed by a massive rally in the stock market, which saw the VIX decline as fear naturally peaked. But as soon as you got into the Omicron area of 2021 and then this bear market, the VIX has obviously started going up. But the key thing is that many folks think this has to go a lot higher, potentially into the 45s or the 50s region for an actual bottom to be put in place. And as a matter of fact, this is actually true. No bear market has ever bottomed without the VIX having reached at least 45, which means that the stock market probably has a lot more downside in it. Now take what you want to do with that information, but for me at least, a reason for the VIX having not gone up as much as the stock market has gone down, because people are now flooded with cash and companies' balance sheets are actually much stronger. And so from an economic standpoint, there's not a lot of fear in the economy. The only fear we're seeing is in the folks that play in the stock market because the market has gone down so much and it's given back most of its gains of 2021. And the reality is that all these other spikes in the VIX were actually driven by economic sell-offs. We saw the pandemic when the economy was locked down, meaning that businesses literally could not sell and function and people got laid off. 
And obviously in 2008, we saw mass layoffs and banks literally collapse. Now, I'm not saying that could not happen in the future, but it has not happened so far. And so chances are with the VIX being where it's at today, this is not abnormal by any stretch of the imagination. And as you can see, the daily trading range of the S&P 500 hasn't actually been on an upwards trend since the start of the year, which was obviously since the start of this bear market. Instead, we've seen ups and downs. And on average, we're sitting right here around a 60 to 70 basis point. And so for me, this means that the overall market sentiment is actually going down, but the volatility is staying the same, which means that the VIX doesn't really have a reason to go up unless a bank collapses or the US economy literally falters, at which point obviously we'd have much bigger things to worry about than the stock market going down. But obviously I'm sure most folks are not gonna be satisfied with those arguments when it comes to predicting the bottom of the market. Instead, we should probably look at some more facts that show the days and the time that it took for us to recover out of bear markets in the past 100 years. And honestly, this data is pretty grim. As you can see on average over the past 100 years, every single bear market that's highlighted in red took on average around 400 to 500 days to bottom out with a medium sitting around 290. And as you can see here in 2022, as of the end of September, which again is actually outdated because the market's gone down a lot more since then, we're sitting at around 267 days which means that chances are it's going to take a lot more time for the market to recover its highs. But you know what many people are not realizing about data like this? This shows us the days that the bear market has lasted, meaning when the market reclaims its 20% decline, that's when the bear market ends. And so in a time of high volatility, like we're seeing today, as we're seeing retail investors and sentiment shift so much and the market being driven so much by algorithms and CPI, then chances are we could recoup this bear market very fast, just like we did in the rally of June and July. And to be honest, that nearly brings us on to addressing the technicals of the S&P 500. Now, you guys know that I don't focus on the technicals and the price action of any of the stocks that I personally invest in. But I think it's important for me to give you guys some perspective from a technical and trading standpoint, because obviously this is something that I've had a background in for the past five years. And I think it's still important to understand because clearly in this kind of environment, the market can indeed be driven by these technicals. To be specific, as you can see, the massive rally that we ended up having last week on Thursday was mostly driven by us having hit a massive psychological level at 34.96. As you can see, back in 2020, when the market crashed in October and in September ahead of the elections, the market broke out soon thereafter, right around 35,800. And that breakout zone was around that $3,500 level, which is above where the market ended up gapping to before the massive bull rally that followed for the next year. And what has happened is that that level also coincided with this 200 week moving average, which obviously is a significant psychological level from which we have actually bounced many times over the past 10 years. And you know what's even crazier? If you zoom out to the monthly time frame, the 50 month moving average also tends to coincide with the exact same level around 3,500 on the S&P 500. And as you can see, this yellow level has also acted as a great buy the dip opportunity and has marked significant bottoms in the market in the past. And so it's safe to say that's exactly why the market ended up having such a massive rally when it hit those levels just last week. Heck, back even in the 1980s and 90s, this level acted as a great buy the dip opportunity, even though in the moment, obviously, it always seemed like the market would continue to go lower. And so to be honest, from a technical perspective, the S&P 500 is actually probably very much near the bottom, unless something more catastrophic happens over the next month, which leads us to break below that $3,500 level for a sustained period of time. And at that point, the next level in the sand would probably be around 3,200, which would mean potentially another five to 6% decline in the market, which would theoretically put us in line with the average of bear market declines. And that right there, I think, is a very critical point to understand. This area right here between 3,200 and 3,500 
could be the bottom area. I'm going to make my call right now. Unless something significantly catastrophic happens where CPI goes to 10%, the Fed hikes rates by another 100 basis points for three consecutive months, or a war breaks out with Taiwan, then I don't think the market will have any more lower to go than below this $3,200 level. But obviously, as we all know, the market is driven by macroeconomics in the short term, so things could definitely drastically change. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.